Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Durrani, and today I'm going to talk about uh, Storytime with Shiny, uh, which is a web application that I made using the Shiny web application framework in our programming language. I also use Quarto to create slides for the stories that the AI generates. And I use Google Run, Google Cloud Run service to deploy the Shiny web application. The main project is about creating stories uh, with uh, AI models. And you might be wondering, uh, what is the project about? This project is about uh, taking just a single sentence, the first sentence of a story that you want to write, and the generative AI models that are used would create a story and also illustrate images for that story. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So this is a screenshot of the app when you first launch it. And here's an example. Uh, I first provide the uh, sentence, the starting sentence of the story, the number of sentences. There are some default instructions for drawing images. And you can also optionally provide a story title. So after you click on Create Story, it will create the story and images and also put the uh, final slides with everything all together uh, in the app. You also that have is so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you also have the theme, uh, the option to change theme. So I'm using just the default themes that are available uh, in Reveal.js through Quarto. So if I change it to the blood theme, uh, this is what it would look like. So you might be wondering why this project? Who is this for? Who would really use it? So this project is not just meant for the uh, intended audience like children or anyone who's interested in creating stories. It's also about you. Uh, who is working on this project and use multiple different technologies uh, which are very valuable at any workplace. So one reason that I worked on this project is because this was uh, part of the Shiny app contest. And also Generative AI is great at making stuff up while we are coding uh, and taking help from Generative AI. One problem we have is that it makes a lot of uh, stuff that doesn't even exist. And stories are those kinds of things. Images are those kinds of things that we can actually generate and use uh, using the generative AI. You also learn a lot of useful stuff like making API requests, uh, develop web applications, uh, create parameterized documents uh, with different languages. So let's get started. Uh, let's create a story text first. So to generate story text with AI models, the model that I use is Llama 3.18b Instruct. And there are also many other models that are available from different sources. The source that I use is the Cloudflare Workers AI Models API. The good thing about uh, this API is that uh, it lets you use any model in beta for free. You can use unlimited number of requests as long as the model is in beta. If it's not in beta, then uh, you can you still have about 10,000 requests every day. Um, and you may be wondering what's an API? Uh, how do we use an API? So an API is a programmatic way to interact with a web service and that allows us to send requests and get data. In R, there are two popular packages for doing API requests. Uh, hitter and the and the recent version of that hitter two that I use in this project. So here's an example of a function that takes in that prompt the first or the opening sentence of the story, and also some other optional parameters, and generates the story. So let's look into this function and see how it works. We first see the parameters of the function the prompt, that's the opening sentence. We also see the number of sentences. I use a default value of five. 
the maximum number of tokens, that means how many words are generated, uh, which are returned back when you make this API request. And then you also need account ID and API key for the Cloudflare Worker AI model API and the base URL of that service. So with these parameters, we can make an API request using the header to package. So it uses the request function and that uses the text, uh, the URL for the uh, for the uh, Llama 3.1 uh, I have a model. Question. Yeah. A question from the previous slide. For for the file, oh no, no. Back to the code, the code. Yeah. So with the number of sentences, is that like the number of sentences it'll generate for the entire story? Or yeah, yeah. Oh. Are, so since I don't want to use a lot of uh, tokens at the same time, mm -hmm. the default value I use is just five. Oh, okay. Uh, but you can use more number of sentences that uh, the generated text has. Okay. Thank um, you. And uh, so when we generate the API request, we use a request function from it or two, where we provide the uh, URL to the service. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, the Llama 3.1 uh, URL. And you also need to provide the API key. Then this is the main uh, body of the, uh, of the function that requires you to tell it what is the role of the system. So uh, we tell the system that you will tell short stories. Each sentence must describe all the details about the stories. And the reason why I use this instruction is because I want to then create images using each sentence. So if I have a lot of details, then a better image is created. And we also say each story must have uh, the number of sentences we provide, and the story must have a beginning, a climax, and an end. Now, uh, the model doesn't necessarily always follow these instructions, uh, but in most cases, we do get a part of story, at least, that makes sense. Uh, the other part is the role of the user, and this is us. So this is where we provide the prompt, the opening sentence of the story. Then the rest of it is the post request, the HTTP request that we make to the API endpoint. And we also check if there's an error, then uh, uh, what to, how to treat that. We don't want to uh, produce an error in the web application. So we want to ignore that error and then perform the request and uh, get the text back as a JSON structure. So here's an example. Here I provide uh, the opening sentence. There once was a prince in the land of Persia and provide three sentences, uh, ask for three sentences that generates uh, the three sentences that we see on the slide. Now, uh, if you look at the first sentence, you can see that we have some details like a golden crown, and we see that there are rubies and diamonds uh, with a light of a full moon and so on. So because I requested for details, I get it. And with these details, we can create better images. So this was the first uh, service, or the first endpoint that we used. The second step is to create images for the illustration on the story. So I do that for each sentence uh, of the story. So here's the function that uses the stable diffusion API, sorry, it's stable diffusion endpoint uh, for the Cloudflare API. You can see that uh, here in the URL. So the version of the stable diffusion model that I'm using is the lightning model. And the advantage of that is that it's pretty quick in generating images, although not very accurate, uh, especially the fingers and the faces that are generated are not great, but on a smaller scale, they still look fine. But as you zoom into the image, if you enlarge the image, it doesn't really look that great. But that's the uh, compromise we have to make when we want the images quickly. So here's again the header to request uh, where we get the URL of the image uh, endpoint and we provide the API key. And here is where we provide the prompt and we also can provide instructions. So instructions is where uh, we tell it what to do 
with uh, the image. What kind of images do you want to create? Should it be a sketch, like a pencil sketch, or should it be an illustration like a children's story? So I have a default uh, in drawing instruction that I provide here. And uh, then the second function, get image, will take this request and then uh, after making the request, it will check if the uh, API responded successfully. If it did, then it will process it and we get a raw object, a binary object, uh, which is our image. So here's an example. Uh, here is the image prompt where uh, we can provide how to illustrate the image. And uh, here is that function from the previous slide where we say take each sentence of the story. I remember in the previous case, we had three sentences that were generated. So we are saying for each sentence, uh, use this image prompt and uh, generate an image for us. So once we do that, it generates uh, the images. Uh, it, it actually generates a request objects at this point. It does not actually make a request. In the next step, we use uh, the rec perform parallel to uh, request parallel uh, to the endpoints, uh, to the same endpoint, but we are making parallel requests. As a result, we get all the images back at the same time. So we don't have to do this sequentially and that saves us time. And then we just process the images using the get image function that we saw on the previous slide and get all our images back. So in our example, for the Prince of Persia, we get these three images. Uh, every time you run this function, even with the same text of the story, you are going to get a different image. So question, so the images will change, but the story won't necessarily change? Yeah, if you request the get story function again, mm -hmm. if you run it, then it will also change the story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the app, though, uh, there is no way to change it unless you click the create story button again, then it will generate new text and new images. Okay. Um, so in the step three, we are now ready to use the generated text and the images to create slides. So for doing that, I used uh, the Quarto uh, technology, uh, which is an open source scientific and technical publishing system. Uh, you can not only generate slides, but you can also generate websites, dashboards, and so on. And I use the parameters in the Quarto file uh, with parameters uh, or parameterized uh, Quarto file you can actually provide it any number of parameters and change the value of the parameters to generate different files. In this application, uh, uh, we need to provide it the images and also that story text so that that is all uh, uh, combined in the slides. So that requires different text and images for each user of the app. That's why I use the parameters. And I do that using the Quarto R package uh, within the web application so that this is generated automatically. Uh, so here are some uh, YAML options. Uh, with these options, uh, the default title and uh, the author is used. So you will always see a story written by you and I, but you can also optionally change the title uh, as we'll see in a moment within the app. And the uh, format that I use for the Quarto file is the reveal JS format that creates presentations. And uh, I say embed read sources true, which makes a single file. It will not create another folder. So we'll have just a single HTML file that will have all the slides. Um, and then there are some other options for transitions. Here is where I use the parameters. So by default, this Quarto file uh, will have these three uh, parameters, which are uh, empty and the empty string, uh, story prompt, story, and images. So we pro provide these parameters programmatically using the Quarto package. 
So here's how I do that with the Quarto package. Quarto package has a Quarto render function where we provide the input file. This is the file uh, part of which we see here. And uh, then we provide it with uh, some metadata of how we want to generate these slides. So for example, what kind of theme, Reveal.js theme we want to use. Uh, this is where we can provide uh, an input uh, for the Shiny app so that we can vary the theme. And then uh, what images, uh, a background image we want to use. So uh, the first page or the title of the uh, slides will also contain an image. So I use the last image that is generated by uh, the stable diffusion model. And so this long line of code is basically processing that so that I get only the last one. And uh, we use the base64 encode function uh, to convert the raw data uh, that is the uh, that is obtained from the API uh, after we made the API request and from raw to an image object. And uh, there are further arguments. Uh, for example, the title can also be changed in the app. So we can provide the title here. And here is where we provide all the parameters. So for the story prompt, whatever opening sentence we are using goes here. Uh, the story text, uh, three sentences in our previous example, they go here. And the images are processed using base64 encode, and they also go here. So this, uh, this function goes in the Shiny app uh, framework uh, within the server of the Shiny app that will then generate uh, the, the story for us, or actually the slides for us after combining the story and the images. Question. Yeah. So with the hmm, using the parameters, it doesn't necessarily like create multiple books or what are the yeah. I guess yeah. will it create multiple books or it can, but the way I'm using it right now is that it will only take uh so this is run only once for a single user. So uh, in, in my previous example where the prompt was, uh, there once was a prince in, in Persia that goes here, the three sentences that are generated, those three go here, and the three images that are generated, those three go here. Now for a single user, uh, this function will run only once, uh, once they click on create story. And so for that user, only one set of slides will be created. And uh, if they create, if they click on create story again, this function will run again and they get another story. Uh, so we, I can generate multiple, as you mentioned, I can also generate multiple stories, uh, but uh, to save time, I only generate one set of slides. Okay. I know that oh. in, with parameterized reporting, the general application is to, uh, for example, have different number of states and for each state, we are generating a different report uh, and by we are, by providing the parameters. So that's the general application of parameterized reporting. Uh, in this case, I'm using this one because this function is run again and again by different users. Okay, thank you. And uh, step four is to now uh, take all of this and put it in the framework of a web app. Uh, the web app uh, framework I use is Shiny Web Application which uh, you can create in R or in Python. And here's the anatomy of how the app works. Uh, as a user, you are the client and you would make a request uh, to, uh, to the server. The server is the computer that is running R uh, that will process the story for us. So once the request is sent, we have two parts in the Shiny app the user interface and the server. And the user interface is what we see as the front end or the web page of the uh, application. And the server is 
that will do all of those uh, calculations. It will send API requests, get the data, combine them in a quarter slide deck, and then display that uh, within the UI. Uh, this should be a footer. Uh, this is the source of this image. So once we have uh, created uh, the Shiny app, uh, we uh, we can obviously run it in uh, our computer, but we want to share it with the world. And so there are many different ways to deploy a Shiny application. The most popular is uh, shinyapps.io uh, in the R world, and now also with Python uh, Shiny applications. Um, the service that I use for this example is the Google Cloud Run service, uh, which also is a great service. It has some differences from Shiny Apps, uh, but the advantage of using Google Cloud is that it can scale the applications for you. You don't need to worry about that part of the, uh, the uh, DevOps. So if you provide it with a Docker image, it will take that and depending on the number of people accessing your app, it will then uh, horizontally scale the number of containers uh, based on the traffic. So this is the landing page of Google Cloud Run Service. And here I have the uh, workflow for how it works. So to create a Cloud Run Service, we go to that page and then we tell it what is the GitHub repository that contains the uh, source code of the app. It uh, requires a Docker file. Uh, in this particular example, I have a different branch, but you can use the main branch also to build your app. And it requires a Docker file that you need to specify in the root of your directory. Then there are some other options that you can use. Uh, you definitely need to allow unauthorized invocations, which means that anyone from the internet should be able to access your app. You can also provide minimum number of instances. So how many uh, in Docker instances will be running all the time. Uh, the ports that you provide, uh, this is what you provide in your Docker image file as well. You can also specify variables and secrets. Uh, for example, to use Cloudflare API, I need account ID and API key that I provide here. And uh, then how much time does the app runs when it's idle? Uh, that's what you can specify there. And how many instances, containers do you allow? So once you do all of that, click on create, that will then deploy the app as you see on the first page here uh, with the name story time. So this is uh, my last slide. Uh, Thank you for listening to this uh, presentation. And I hope uh, this provides some resources to anyone who would be listening later. And thanks to Lydia for listening to this. Uh, hopefully this is useful. Yes, I love it. That is very, very cool. One question that came to mind. So I'm pretty new to, I should it be, but I'm pretty new to Gen AI. Um, so one of my questions is like, I know, um early on folks were saying like i guess dolly it was actually like kind of copying people's like content um do like so the ones you use the gen AI models that you use is there a way to check that they're not like kind of stealing other people's stories or uh, i'm not actually sure i'm also pretty new to using gen ai um, mm -hmm. So I'm actually, this is a very good question. I actually don't know if they are. Stable Diffusion and uh, Mid Journey are two very popular uh, frameworks for generating images. Uh, and Dolly is another one, as you mentioned. Um, so I'm not actually sure. I think they do. No. Um, just like Dolly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. It's interesting. So then, and there, Based on the code, there wasn't anything that necessarily said make it a children's story, right? Not from yeah, what I saw. So if I go to the second slide, uh I think it's probably third one. So so here I have some default instructions uh mm. that always appear when you first launch the app. 
So you can edit this, oh. but I just say make it child friendly illustrations. And oh. also one thing that I didn't mention I should probably is uh, that I also test for profanity. Uh, so mm. if someone is entering any words that are explicit uh, in the opening sentence, uh, although the model itself will also not generate anything, it will say uh, that I do not create uh, these kinds of, uh, uh, I, I do not respond to these kinds of prompts. That's, I think, the mm. default. Um, but other than that, I still check for profanity. And sometimes mm. the app would fail because of that. But I think that's, yeah. that's okay. Okay, cool. cool. So with where it says the number of sentences back, you had it for like three to five, right? Uh, I know I saw three at some point. Yeah, three is the minimum and the maximum yeah. is 10. Oh, the maximum is 10. Okay. But I have success using even 15 number of sentences. Uh, in the shiny yeah. settings, they are three to 10. Um, mm. And if you provide less than three, then there's a the prompt in the app that says provide more than two, uh, but mm. uh, there's no limit, upper limit, but obviously that takes longer. So I tried using 20 uh, images, uh, but that sometimes uh, the API request fails. So I think mm. it also depends on, uh, because I'm using parallel requests for the images, maybe the server doesn't like that with lots of images. Okay. But yeah, this is very cool. I love this. Oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll start a business as like a children's book author. <laughs> Use yeah. this as a base. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for this presentation. I really enjoyed it. I'm definitely going to check out your GitHub. To... So right now, I'm, I see you're doing it locally. Is it like on the web already? Or it's yeah, just it like... Is. Uh, it is. Oh. I, I, yeah, I should add this on my slides as well. Uh, I'll share it um, in the project club, the GitHub, oh. as well as the link to the app. Okay, perfect. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much. Uh, let me just put... Thank you.